Is Uganda at crossroads after 30 years of the NRM regime? Or is this yet another gambit from the opposition that wants to portray a grim picture? For a country that has never witnessed a peaceful handover of power, questions are abound whether the ruling regime can deliver this watershed moment. Yet the debate of succession within the NRM remains a taboo within its rank and file. And a recent bill to lift the retirement age of judges and justices to many was a red herring to pave way for the president to rule for life. On the spot tonight is the Justice and Constitutional Affairs Minister Kahindo Tafide and former Shadow Attorney General Abdul Katuntu. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. You are on the spot, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me begin with you, General Otafiri. The last time we heard you were contesting the election of your opponent, Captain Kahonda. How far would that? Uh, <clears throat> the last time I was contesting the election of uh, Mr. Kahonda was when I was tasking the NRM Electoral Commission to look into his academic credentials. And uh, since the NRM Electoral Commission, in its wisdom, chose not to look into it, well, I just gave up. You gave up? I gave up the idea. And so let, I've, I put the elections <coughs> behind me. You. We always knew you as a man who never gives up that way, that easily. Well, there are wars that are best won. And those wars which are best won are so achieved by not shooting bullets. For a general to give up on a captain, it's rare, isn't it? He's not a captain because he's never joined the army. Or even, no. that, that is even worse. Then. No. That is even worse. Because then. the man who joined <laughs> the army mm. is uh, Dixon, Levan, Mutabazi. There was you, Mugabe Kahonda, has never joined the army. That is even makes the case worse. So. Yes, I leave it to the courts of law to determine. You happen to be a historical member of the high command, and now you occupy, I should say, the converted seat of the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs. Tell us in certain terms whether you will support the proposal that has been brought to Parliament to lift the age limit on the justices, the judges, and the presidential. You see, I happen to be the steward of constitutionalism. And as steward, it's not my wishes that we will determine the destiny of Uganda. It's what the people of Uganda in the entirety will decide for the country that will prevail. Whether I support it or don't support it is immaterial because I'm the referee, I'm the steward. I think it's a very unkind of you to ask me whether as justice minister I should dictate to the people of Uganda how they want to govern themselves. They have the God-given right to manage or mismanage themselves. As a former uh, Attorney General in the Shadow Cabinet, in a position like this, can the Constitutional Affairs Minister, even though he's the steward of or the vanguard of the law as it, as it should be, have a stand or maybe a guidance? Well, if I was the Minister of Justice and Cons uh, Constitutional Affairs, I would surely have a stand. Why? Because if the bill was to come from government, I would be the one pushing that bill, meaning I have a stand on it. Uh, if it came from the opposition or from an individual member of parliament, then I'll have my stand as the Minister of Justice. And indeed, the country deserves to listen to the views and the judgment of the Constitution and uh, Justice Minister of the country. But uh, unfortunately, I'm not the minister. Do you, so, find, it uh, odd? So <laughs> Do you find it odd that the minister it now uh, cannot have a stand or you don't believe him? Probably has a stand. No, but he has told you he doesn't have a stand. That is his opinion. Why do I imagine he has a stand? But, but let me say this. You see, uh, when this issue came up, 
the bill which was being sought by the Honorable Kafir to be introduced in, in, in the House provided for uh, scrapping, not scrapping, but increasing the age uh, limit of uh, justice of the courts of judicature. However, the issue of the presidential age limit wasn't in that bill. But there was a serious thinking that this was a red herring uh, giving or providing for the eventual presidential uh, age limit lifting. So we missed out on what would have actually been a legitimate debate whether people employed in government service, not only about judges, but maybe even doctors, should the doctor retire at 60? Should a judge of the high court retire at 60 or he can retire at 65? It should have been a very legitimate debate. Unfortunately, it was never to be because it was eventually vulgarized uh, because of the political circumstances of, of, of the of, of the politics of 2021, whether President and UN7 would still be eligible to stand as head of state. But if the people, like you say, choose to say, okay, let us remove the age limit. By the way, the president has been very categorical that he will not even be party to those who are calling for the removal of age limit. In fact, he even gives a guidance and, and says at 75, you have lost your vigor and and even says, if you want good ones, go for those below 75. Okay. If the people, like you say, have chosen that, when that opened the floodgates for having a president rule for life? Well, you see, your problem is juxtaposing real politics with imagination. Because the people of Uganda have a, a God-given right to determine their way forward. I think it's their right to make mistakes. And that's what I believe in. Because for me to hold an opinion and hold on to it and think I'm right when everybody else is wrong, I ought to have my head examined. Because this country is not my estate. I am a cog in a machine. Yes, I have my private preferences and opinions. But those opinions are not the opinions of the people of Uganda. I ought to respect their decisions even when they are wrong. When it comes to the debate, then I'll make my views known. But I cannot tell the people of Uganda that I want you to go this way. I can only do that when there is need for seeking guidance, when I ought to, to guide. But then for me to prejudice the people of Uganda into which direction they should go, I think is a mistake. Okay, do we need to change the constitution as it is today? No, we are not changing the constitution. Do we need to amend? You see, this is where you are going we, wrong. We are we not need changing to amend. the constitution. We, need to amend. we are not amending the constitution. We are reviewing the constitution. Those who introduce these words into the vocabulary, of the English language, who are not at fault. There is amending, there is remaking, reviewing, because there are certain aspects of our constitution which certainly need review. There are aspects like what uh, here was talking about, like uh, the retirement age. Some people think it should be reviewed, others think it's, uh, it should continue. Let's debate it and then determine which way forward. The, the, the land question. There are quite a number of things that we should look into, into it. There were timelines which were fixed into the constitution that make it inoperable. Sometimes difficult, no, not sorry, not inoperable, but sometimes difficult to operate. Should we maintain them? Should we remove them? You know, we, see, we are reviewing. We are not amending. Honorable uh, Ablukatonto, uh, isn't that just really semantics? Review, amend, and change. At the end of the day, you get what you want, which is continue with the presidency with the same person at the helm? No, 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 that's not. <laughs> but the, the, this is giving you the same result. No, 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 no. Because... You see, you see, you make this dangerous presumption that amending, reviewing, and changing the constitution is meant for preservation of the Museveni... His survival in power. Survival in power. Let me ask you one question. 
Is Museven Imoto? No, he's not. So why should the people of Uganda legislate for the interests of an individual? We, you, are be, be, you behave like there was no Uganda before we came. There is no Uganda when we are. There will be no Uganda after we are gone. We are not immortal. So why should anybody legislate for the interests of Otafiri? Uganda is bigger than Otafiri, is bigger than General Yorim Seveni, is bigger than Honorable uh, Katuntu here. We should look forward to legislating for the whole country with hindsight of our past and cognizance of our present and then for the future. So that should that be understood? Children, should, that be understood should that be understood to mean that since man cannot live forever, then we can wait for after all if your time no, it's is done. No, it's not a live forever. We are laying down principles by which we sh Uganda should be governed. I said with hindsight of our, of our history, cognizant of the present, and with introspection into the future. What kind of country do we want? For me, what kind of country do I miss when I was young? Did I miss? Should what I missed be visited on my children? That's why I would like to promulgate, have a constitution that will take the interests of our children and their children and avoid making the same historical mistakes we made yesterday. That's why all of these, we should review these, and uh, I'm very glad I'm here with Honorable Katuntu. In the process of choosing the Constitutional Review Commission, I hope to work with... Honorable Abdu Katuntu. No, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I hope to work with uh, Honorable Katuntu, Katuntu and <coughs> people of like mind, mm -hmm. people who are reasonable for us to agree I, I, so you are, to, okay. to have a minimum confluence of ideas so for, for us to be able to review this constitution and harmonize. Because constitutions are meant for harmony. Constitution is the, the constitution is the basic law that harmonizes political existence. Yes, but if you are to agree with him, you'll be pulling from which, from which position to where? Because you have to have a stand. Yeah, that's why he's opposition. So he's opposing yeah. the So harmony. He's you cannot assuming harmonize. he's opposing the You cannot harmonize with yourself. You harmonize with those. So you already have, so have a stand. Uh -huh. So you have a stand. Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. What is your stand? Then we can know his stand. Stand on what? On, on, the, pre, on, the, on, the, on the constitutional age limit. Well, uh, my stand is very clear. Uh, in law, we have this belief that a good law should be blind. Whoever walks its path mm -hmm. becomes its victim. Uh, once you amend the law, and I, I'm very, very happy to hear that Jen Otafili uh, speaks in those terms that we don't have to amend the law for purposes of a personal uh, gain or for purposes of one individual to, to benefit from it. We need to amend the law because of principle. We know very well when we were uh, amending the Constitution last time, we had the famous article 1052 about term limits. It is a provision that had not been tested since the Constitution was promulgated. Yet we amended it knowing very well that there was going to be only one Ugandan who was going to be a beneficiary. And uh, the process everybody knows, every Ugandan knows what we went through um, to, the, to some extent which we are I think bordering on, on, on corruption to have that particular uh, provision or article amended. That's number one. Point number two, if we go ahead and amend this particular one, who are we, are we having in mind one individual or not? What has been happening all over the country? Chairpersons of the NRM and many NRM functionaries have been going around and saying, look here, yeah, Mr. President, we want to amend this such that you continue learning us forever. So if we go ahead and amend that particular constitution, we'll be doing it for an individual. And General Tafide is saying that is bad. I'm very, very uh, excited that the Minister of Justice can 
really gone record on national radio to say we should not go that path. And I agree with you entirely, General Tafid. The, this thing about... Is this the meeting of minds you talked about? No, no, no. Oh, no, actually, no, no, no. actually, that's what I said. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, to a certain extent, to a certain extent, it's the meeting of minds. But I don't quite agree with him that when the majority make a decision, then they are doing it for the purposes of one person. Remember I said, we are doing these things with hindsight of our history. Maybe those who decided to lift the term limits were cognizant of the current situation and they thought perhaps the, con the, the continued leadership of General Museveni at that time was necessary. Because I said, let's, don't, don't you find <coughs> let's, that as a contradiction let's, there. let's do these things with hindsight of our history, our turbulent history. Gentlemen, we're going to take a break <laughs> and we'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara and my guests tonight are Honorable Kahindo Tafiri and Honorable Abdul Katuntu. It appears what, was, uh, what you thought was a meeting of mind actually was not a meeting of mind on the issue of uh, removal or not removal or to remove the presidential age limit. But let me ask you, because it appears members of the opposition are really sort of, uh, should I say, scared on the removal of this age limit? Why? I mean, um, wh where is the scare? So long as you have, so long as you have um, a credible and fair election, and then you go and knock him out in the field, whoever, whoever wants to stay forever won't. Oh, well, I, I think it's not about having a credible and fair elections. Because in many of these countries, credible and fair elections really is a myth. It doesn't arise. However, you've just said it when we walked in that, uh, and I, I, before I even said that, I want to remind you of the speech of 20, was it 26 January? In uh, 1986. Uh, when His Excellency the President was swearing in, uh, at the podium I saw General Tafiri, looking very young then actually, uh, and Somebody else can do something to a human, uh, uh, to a human body. Yeah. And, and very <laughs> different from what he is today. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he did say this, that the problem of African countries is, are leaders who don't want to live in power. He seems to have changed the opinion. And no, he hasn't. He has said, when you look at our history, I think he was meaning that history. Hindsight right. and, and, our, and our history... Probably we don't need to change because our history shows that the leaders don't want to leave. No, no, no. no. Let, let me make my point. Okay. Mm. And you see, no, that's when, what, when, that's he, made, not when, when he, make, he made that statement, mm -hmm. many people believed him. Many, many people believed him. When he changed his opinion and, and they started editing the speech uh, to add things without election, knowing our history like General Tafiri is now doing, he never shared that opinion why he had that change of opinion. Of, of opinion. And uh, I, I thought that is one of the mistakes the president made. But having said that, there is always an opportunity, a peaceful handover. You say it is a watershed. That was an issue in 1986. It is still an issue 30 years later. So have we made a forward movement on that particular point? We haven't. Is it one of the tenets of democracy? Yes, it is, in our view, as, as opposition. And, and it helps. It helps the, democ the democracy grow. It helps leader, new leaders coming in, new ideas, and so on. And it is not that when you leave power, you are no longer relevant or you are unpopular. You can still remain popular, you can still be a very good leader, and you give away like many institutions. You've seen now what's going on in the United States today. Eight years maximum, there's a new in president. Tanzania. In Tanzania, here. In Tanzania, here. And I, I'm so surprised because I thought President Museven having had this very, very strong relationship with the Tanzania as a country and the leadership from the time of Mwalim Julius Nyerere, he should have picked some of these values <coughs> from a country like a Tanzania. And, and, and just look at any continent, any, any country on the continent where we think there is a little bit of semblance of democracy. You've got term limits, you, you, you have pre, uh, age limits, and so on. So um, many people, I suppose, look at you, Honorable Kahindo Tafiri. You 
are a member of the high command, you are historical, you are a minister, you are somebody with a man of substance. And, and they're wondering, in the continuity plan of your party, probably General Kahindo Tafiri should have also been in the queue. Are you timid not to run against President Museveni? There's not a question of running or not running against President Museveni. It's a question of what do you think as an individual is good for the country? I'm not only a member of the High Command or the Minister, I'm also a member of the Central Executive Committee of our party. And it's what we discuss in the Central Executive Committee of our party that determines our sense of direction and vision. The pertinent question is, is it time for change of leadership of the party? Is it desirable? It's not what Honorable Katuntu and his group want. It's what we, in the ruling party, the National Resistance Movement, think we should do, which we periodically put before the people every five years to test that we have this leader, we still think he's capable. What do you think? And the people bring us back to power. So as a member of the Central Executive Committee, do you have members who aspire to lead, including yourself? Of course. Of course. We so are not you, stupid. You aspire to lead yourself? No, we are not stupid. But we know when it is desirable, when it is you, possible. You know that the, the, when it is deadly yes. and when it is not. Yes, <laughs> we know. Because... All these aspects of management of society have been tested in this country. We've tested. We've tested the parameters. Is change desirable at this moment? Is it desirable? To what effect? What are the pros and cons? The pros and cons of change at this moment? Or we weigh them. And then we choose. We say, no, let's have this candidate. General Yoweri Museveni always comes as a candidate of the National Resistance Movement. And opposed? No, we have so internal candidate. democracy within the party. We have internal democracy within the party. And these issues are debated at the Central Executive Committee. And recommendations are made to the National Ex Executive Committee. And then the Congress. People who have dared to contest against President Seven or challenge him, the likes of Dr. Besige, the likes of Honorable Mama Mbabazi. We've seen how you've come to them like a town of bricks. With, due, the, with due respect, yes. with due respect to the Honorable Amama Mbabazi, he challenged General Museveni and some of us didn't find, found him wanting. He left us he went to the opposition. They tried to put up the TDA. Did he succeed? If we were bad, if we were psychophant, why did the TDA alliance adopt him as their presidential candidate? I, I think General Tafiri is missing a point. No, I'm not missing no point. The, the issue is... I'm not missing no oh, point. Why don't you, you listen then? Why did you... Re, why let's do you let, want us... Let's why let's do you let's want let's us to... Let's I have accepted. Why did you want us to accept... He's trying to, show you, he's you, trying to show you the point you're missing. But yes, you, yes, yes. Him. Yes, <laughs> what you, yourselves, could not accept. The, was it pro because the reason we rejected him was the reason you rejected him or otherwise? Well, I leave it to you, but... This is a one million dollar question. Actually, it is not even a one pence question. L let me tell you why. You see, nobody is saying uh, the right honorable man Babazi was very popular, he would have won. What Patrick is talking about, or what we talk about, is the principle of competition. What they do in their party is to ring fence the position. And actually, it is the only one which they always ring fence. They have resolutions, sole candidate. Competition against their chairperson is actually criminal. And you end up the way Honorable Mama and Baba's ended up. That's what we are talking about. We, are, we don't mind whoever wins, whoever is popular in your party, let him win. But can't you really have, take for example in the party I belong to, 
We have two candidates that have been competing and so on. Dr. Vesje wins because actually in the party is more popular than, Doc, uh, than General Mund. But there is competition. And you see, you cannot talk about democracy without political competition. It doesn't make sense. So we are not talking about the quality of who should compete with who. But can't in your part allow yes, yes. competition? I yes. think that's the principle. Yes, and that's the point you are missing. Yes, Honorable Katuntu, you have the liberty to do what you do because you don't have the country in your hands. So if you have a country in your hands, yeah, you don't compete? We, no, it's not a question of competition. Only have it in your grasp. It's not a question of competition. Uh, it's not a question of competition. We have the country in our hands. And we cannot have the liberty of tearing the party apart. Because the welfare of the ruling party impacts on the welfare of the country. How does open competition tear the, a, a party? General, uh, <laughs> the right honorable Amama Balazi had opportunity to offer himself. How, when he was a strong there, candidate, no, he had resolved that he would not listen, compete? There were resolutions for, there were people who called no, for... No, no competition, actually. No, 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 wait. There are people within the party who called for sole candidate. That sole candidate did not exclude anybody else who would stand up on the floor of National Executive Council and challenge the sole candidate. And indeed, that, that was challenged in neck. We voted on it. In, in the National Executive Council, we voted on the idea. So, you know, we voted on the idea, and the idea was uh, defeated, you know, because there was a question of appointing the Secretary General, the, you know. The, anybody could have challenged the... You, you started telling us about looking where we are headed as a country. Yes. If you cannot accept open competition and change, leadership, changing of leadership, peaceful transition of power, really, then you are not talking about a, a good future where Must we are headed. we compete for the sake of competing? Must we compete for the sake of competing? Has none challenge of General Museveni divided the NRM? No. Is it in our interest that we maintain homogeneity within the party? Yes. If we think that this leader we have is still useful, should we subject him to unnecessary competition and re tearing up of the party for purposes of appearing. So I just, want, I just want to explain that's, 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 how general that, that's what we call general Otafiri. That's how, what we call open competition listen, that's what, tearing up of that's, a party. That's what we call bourgeois democracy. F doing things for, the, for, the, for their sake. And that's what put this country where it was 30 years ago. These are the pitfalls we are trying to avoid. Now, after stabilizing the country, after building our party, you, you allow competition. So, yes. So, so, so <laughs> let me put it. If people, because, because if somebody nominated you and another seconded you and the Central Executive Committee elected you to run, would the chairman fight you? No. So why are you Don't saying you that? Say that you, so why are you saying that? Mr. 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 Kamara. Yes. How do you know that this that process does not take place in the Central Executive Committee? You said for the sake of, we cannot wait, tell the country because wait, we want to compete. Wait. So there's no competition. Mr. Kamara, how do you know, what evidence do you have that that process does not take place in the Central Executive Committee? Because the Central Executive Committee recommends the candidate. So the, the Central Executive Committee vets candidates. You know? It vets candidates. And in this case, in the last case, there was only one who offered himself. Mm -hmm. Honorable, Honorable mm -hmm. has had opportunity to come and pay the 20 million shillings and mm -hmm. get onto the phone. But you know, you know <laughs> General, General <laughs> Kahina, there, there's, there's a history that in 1980, President Museveni stood for an election and lost, but he picked up guns. So probably that's what you mean, that if you lose an election, there could be chaos. Because there was a cash in 1980 when somebody lost. No, that's that's simplifying. That's simplifying the the events and trivializing very serious issues. Okay, now because uh, uh, in 1980 we did not have the opportunities to resolve contradiction like we have now. 
Okay, on uh, uh, on uh, 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 maybe if moving away from that because as FBC you started this defiance campaign and really it looks like it's dead and buried. Dead of, and of, buried? Of, of what value? Dead and buried? Maybe not. Uh, uh, let me, let me say this and and, and uh, we've had a debate and the conversation about defiance within the FDC has been ongoing for some time. There is a section within the FDC that believes in defiance as, as a way of advancing our struggle. Uh, there is also another uh, opinion within the FDC that does not believe in defiance. We have those two schools of thought within FDC. Uh, and, where, and where do you fall? Oh, I, of course, I'm on record. I, I'm not a believer in defiance. I think the option we have to get to power is to organize differently, build party structures, recruit from the NRM. You don't recruit from the NRM by defiance. You recruit from the NRM by strengthening yourselves and convincing the, not the likes of Otafide maybe, but there are those people who are in there uh, who could actually get on our side. And they may not be very, very much enthusiastic if it's about defiance and so on. So that conversation is still going on. However, defiance, as long as it's non-violent, the section that believes in defiance is actually right in the own way. Those of us who don't believe in defiance, we also right in our own way. So we have those schools of thought. So I don't want to talk for defiance, whether it is dead so, or so not. But, but is it, isn't that not. strange that you, uh, the prominent members of FDC are sort of divided. You, Honorable Abdul Katuntu, you're not on the same page with the most prominent member of your party, Dr. Kiza Bisiji. Oh, <laughs> let me tell you. If two people agree all the time, one of them is useless. I'm not useless, neither is Dr. Vesige useless. I don't agree with Dr. Vesige 100%. Neither does Dr. Vesige agree with me 100%. And that is politics. And that's what makes FDC different from the NRM. Because in the NRM, mm. it's about that solo candidate. If you disagree with him, you end up the right Honoba uh, Mama uh, uh, way, uh, uh. you end up the Dr. Kiza way. Uh, uh, so uh. having different schools of thought in a political organization like ours, it is very healthy and we have competition of ideas and we even have competition of candidates. No, we also have differences in opinion within oh, the party. Oh, so oh. that you, you choose to do it openly. For us, we disagree and do it internally. But, but let me say this, no, no, Ugandans, no, Ugandans no, deserve no, the no, right. No, 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 these are public no, 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 institutions. No, 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 no. Have you had occasions when I have reminded the president that I told him this was wrong? Which wrong? Two. Certain occasions. Uh, that's like, when... Like, it, it, means, it means the matters I am reminding him about have been discussed internally. We've had disagreement. But we work by the formula of democratic centralism. Even the dissenting voices fall in line when majority takes a decision. So what do you think? So internally in the NRM, we have debate. Your good ideas have been suffocated. Yes. No, 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 no. No, they are not suffocated. That's not suffocation. That's our mode of democracy. You debate, the majority carries the day. And when the majority carries the day, you all fall in line. Okay, let, let, me, let me, let me, let me, Patrick, let me and give an us, example. We don't let disagree me, let, let openly. Me, let me, let me, let, let me give an example. The first person who addressed Dr. Uh, uh, Honoboka Hinda's group was Dr. Vesiji. When he came up with that piece, the missive, yes. immediately did that, he, he became a criminal. You wanted to court-martial him. Why? Because they are disagreed. Because in NRM, no, you no, cannot afford to disagree no. and you remain there. Ono it's Katuntu. not possible. Ono, ono if, even you, General okay. Tafiri, the, 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 the day you will disagree, I'll, you will be on the same path I'll like a you, Dr. BCJ, like, like, like a right one over Mama and Babas. I would want you to respect our style of doing things. We're going to take a break. We call it, wait, we call it <laughs> democratic. <laughs> Centralism. No, it's not about many, yes. many words put yes. together, General <laughs> no, 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 no. For us, we say, like, um, let me give you an example. 
Do you think we are monolithic in cabinet? No, we are not. In the cabinet, very many views contend. The majority view carries the day. And all of us... That is, respect that is possible, but leadership yes, by the artists, yes, you are yes. monolithic at that. No, 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 no. But, <laughs> no that we disagree. Extreme. At various levels. Okay. Of the party. We're going to take a, we're going to take a break. Yeah, we'll come back. <laughs> I'll be opening the line so that you two at home can be a part of this discussion. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Kamara. My guests tonight are Honorable Kahindo Tafiri and Honorable Abdul Katuntu. And I can tell you in the break, my producer uh, brought out a picture from the vault in 1986. And uh, people there, uh, including uh, General Kahindo Tafiri, you can really see what 30 years is a long time. Yeah, it is, but you see the point I was making. <laughs> General Kahindo Tafiri looks better than he was 34 years ago. Yet, yes, people should be looking better when they were younger than now. <laughs> looking at that picture, you say, very haggard. Yeah, but the man who had been for five years. How can, okay, Honorable uh, Abdul Katund, how can you as the members of the opposition embrace dialogue and see that this country you know handles the precarious sort of transition that will have to come anyway i think we are at a crossroad it, and, and my own thinking is dialogue is the best way out of this uh, i think that's why kind of tafiri general is saying look here he, he he has some ideas which he thinks he can share with people like me. And some of us are very, very open to that sort of uh, attitude. That th this country belongs to all of us. Uh, none has superior ideas. And so it's all about building up ideas and we move our country uh, uh, a step forward. So my own thinking, and actually our party policy is we are not uh, objectionable to, to dialogue. We need to talk. We need to talk, and we need to talk yesterday. This uh, sort of uh, attitude against each other is not correct in politics. Countries must have what we call a, minima, a bare minimum working relationship of the entire political class. What issues can we agree on, and what issues can we say, well, we can't, and therefore we can subject them to competition or the winner, the majority takes, takes all. That's the attitude <coughs> I, I To begin I with, have. where do you agree with them? On where, where do you find them, um, you can work with them as the NRM? On the economy, for example. On the economy. On, uh, even in institutions like the one I work with, Parliament, we, we need to sit, for example, you, you bring uh, an issue on, on um, our indebtedness. How can we reduce it? these loans we are getting, where do we invest it? What sort of budget should be going to infrastructure? What are the priorities the country should have now? We are going to have in the next 30, 40 years being run on <coughs> revenues from the oil and gas. Where do we invest it? You know, do we put it on administration and- But haven't we mortgaged that gas so? when it's still underground really? These are the real issues where I think we should discuss and move on as a country together. So. These are the small little issues sometimes that divide us do not make sense to me. And, and the way I look at Jeno Tafide is not the way maybe some members in the opposition look at him. Others look, you just have to read on the social media. They will insult him, they will abuse him, I don't have that time. Maybe the way he looks at me is not the way some NRM members look at me. The others insult us, we are useless, we, all, all those sorts of things which are quite negative. So a country must have an agenda where we must have a consensus. How do we run our just system, for example? Do we have to disagree? Because we all go to the same place, whether it is General Tafiri, if he has a land dispute, it's me, we go to the same judge and we go to the same register. So <coughs> can, do we have a very, very strong judiciary which actually delivers justice and timely justice? If we are debating that sort of issue, why do we have a partisan interest? Does any of us benefit? We don't. If you are driving on that road, we drive all. I imagine uh, we all drive and we don't have a, a skilly, cars clearing the traffic and so on. If the traffic is clogged, well, <laughs> we are victims and we so on. So we need an ordinary public transport, for example, in Kampala.
infrastructure that can de decongest the city. All these are national issues mm -hmm. that should never be partisan and where I think we can share ideas with General Tafiri and he has to respect my views and sometimes my views are superior to his. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> well, 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 I agree with you on this we have a concurrence of ideas on questions of democracy, peace, justice, social welfare, economic pro prosperity. I think these are non-contentious issues because this is for the common good. As to how we make applications of uh, this uh, uh, agenda, we may have differences. The fact that we all need peace, whether you're FDC or NRM, peace is universal to us, and it's a, a human quest that you should be treated with dignity and you should, I should treat you with dignity and you treat me with dignity. That's non-negotiable. <coughs> that we should have economic prosperity. You feel hungry in the same way I do. That we should have uh, social welfare. You fall sick, I fall sick. The ultimate is, is the same. The treatment the Dr. Bessie is getting in Kasanga today is that dignified as a Minister of Constitutional Affairs and Justice. Well, you better put that to the Minister of Internal Affairs. Who? And you know, you're talking about dignity, you're talking yes, about yes, rights, yes, 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 and things yes. that are right and wrong. Yes, yes, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll put that question to him also, well, but I'm asking well, you right well, now, well, because well, where are Ugandan? Is, my, is the leader of a political party. Even this one, you don't have an opinion. Does the leader of a political party, a national political party, treat himself with dignity? Does he respect himself? You, well, I leave that to you to judge. Because there are certain uh, levels of conduct below which we should not go. So let me ask, when you meet... When, when, you, when, when you, you are a, a young man playing football in the field, is different from your, when you are an old man with grandchildren. When you have grandchildren, <coughs> you behave differently from a <coughs> high school student. So... Uh, uh, let's not go into this. No, uh, no, no. Be, 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 uh, Patrick, just one second. Mm -hmm. Before Jenota Fili leaves that point, it reminds me of, uh, of, of, of some case where uh, some bad mannered fellow, you know, raped a lady. And eventually his defense was that she had dressed provocatively. Does that make you? committed that crime. So that, that's the same argument Otafida is raising. Whether a rape is a rape, or you can't say, oh, she was very beautiful. I couldn't resist. No, that's, uh, that's uh, I mean, that is not acceptable. That's incompatible. That, that is that's, not that's, acceptable. That's incompatible. Well, that's, you uh, cannot no, uh, humiliate somebody. No, no, then no, you say, you know, no, no, he no, is no, not no, behaving well. No, no, Institutions of government no, no, don't work that way. No, 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 with due respect. Dr. Vesic is not the only national leader in opposition. There are other national leaders in opposition. So do, should we go beyond this? Yes. No. Why not? Okay, let me open up the line so that uh, uh, for those of who are calling can engage you, ask you questions, make their comments and make their contributions so we get to know what Ugandans are thinking tonight, especially those who are tuned right now. Let me take the very first caller online. Hello. Hello. Uh, this is Makubi Charles calling from Namugongo. Yes, sir. Go right ahead with your question or comment and make it precise. Uh, 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 what I think, I respect the general mm -hmm. and I respect his contribution. But uh, what I think the general, there are some truths missing in his statement. From 86, in was the transition that was made that from four years to five years then to to 95 to make the constitution. They have been changing. They have been changing. Go every now and then. It goes on to the policies they have made. They have said that uh, uh, Luero, Luero Triangle. That was Luero. Was it the Tandukwa? Then the Bonaba Gagawari Operation Wealth Creation. So there is no shared vision as Ugandan. There is no shared vision. Cause like I would think that uh, as a country. There is what they call cooperative advantage. 
cooperative advantages where you identify your strengths against all other countries. Then you invest all your efforts. But here we are, it's just Katogo. Today, we live in a moment. Today you are on this, tomorrow you are on that. Today, uh, Uganda Airlines was collapsed in their vicinity. Today they are talking about Uganda Airlines and Uganda Railway. What went wrong? Can't we sober up and sit down and plan for the nation, irrespective of whether one is on opposition or not on opposition? Secondly, case of SCJ is a, a legitimate uh, leader of opposition. The way you treat him gets him sympathy from other people. Cause like you, you, you make him like he's like a nuisance, he's a robber. He's, he shares also a vision. He has a stake in the country. He also has a vision. Why do you think that you will have a monopoly over, over other people? Thank you very much. You've made your point, Sawa. Caller from Namugongo. <coughs> Let me take another call online. Hello? 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 Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? Okay, this is uh, Nyundu Richard calling in from uh, the ends of uh, Muyenga. Now, I have two points to make to uh, the Honorable Justice Minister Kahindo Tafire. Very quickly, sir. Kahindo Tafire, on the 29th of January 1986, you were behind the path of Mr. Seven. I quote, nobody should think that what's happening today or what has been happening in the last few days is a mere change of guard. This is not a, a mere change of guard. I think it is a fundamental change in the politics of our country. Because in Africa, we have seen so much change, but change has become meaningless. It's no longer change, but there are the turmoil. group gets rid of the other group, and that group doing it worse than the group to get rid of. Imagine those words were said by the man who was standing in front of you. General Otafire, tell us. What was the time frame President Museveni was supposed to stay in power from 1986 as Uganda was being brought to, uh, I mean, as Uganda was being brought back to the uh, correct line? And lastly, there's another theory. Myself, I've been a communications coordinator at the, at the uh, NRM Secretariat. You, the elites in the NRM, have, have always told us that the president is going to leave power, the president is always going to to uh, hand over power. When will that happen? I tell my I Okay, 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 sir. Thank you very much. Um, let me take two more, and then we can uh, return to here. Okay. Hello? Hello, Patrick. Good evening, sir. What's your name, and where are you calling from? Program, my, brother. my name is Brian from Makere. Dan Makere, on air, sir. Please do not shy away from the best your question, because you're the Minister of Justice, Courts have ruled before that soldiers should leave, policemen should leave this compound. They have gone back every now and then, and you're breaking your own rules. Why is that? Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Let me take another question or comment. Hello? <coughs> Hello? <coughs> Hello? <coughs> Hello? <coughs> hey, Patrick. Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? Vincent. I'm calling from Kitintale. Okay, Vincent Kitintale, you're on air, sir. Mine is a short one. I okay. Want to ask the question you know, that Siri asked. Hello? Yes, go right ahead, sir. I want to answer the question you know, that Siri asked as to whether Dr. Vesje is the only leader. Okay. Go, okay, go for it. He is, in the mm. sense that he's the only leader who was able to put up an opposition, and in a regime where you have such a president, he becomes unique and therefore will be treated, but others, they are not worth fighting. Okay. General, General Tafiri, you have your answer there. Okay. <coughs> uh, well, I could put a rejoinder. <coughs> he claims Dr. Vesige is the only leader. But uh, I envy him the liberty to express his views. But uh, I don't envy him the lack of information he seems to exude. UPC has a leader. He's a national leader. The Democratic Party has a leader. He's a national leader. The FDC has a president. He's a national leader. And um, with the rest of what my assertion, I leave to the country to Examine 
So sometimes we condemn the police for sometimes undignified treatment of Dr. BCG. Yes, sometimes. I've been on uh, record uh, to criticize criticizing the conduct of the police. And if I were wrong, the police authorities would not have put some of the police officers, errant police officers, on trial for bad conduct, meaning justifying that my criticism of some of their behavior, their, their conduct, is wanting. However, as national leaders, we should also have uh, minimum standards of conduct, like respecting the police, uh, and sometimes not uh, pushing the police to behave the way they, they behave. Uh, you know, it takes two to tango. Um, however, two wrongs don't make a right. I condemned the assault on the courts of law. I'm on record. And I'm glad the police authorities apologized. And um, life has gone on. Uh, when we've reached a certain level of national leadership and responsibility, we should handle that level of responsibility very carefully. Our conduct should be in consonance with the level of responsibility entrusted to us. Sometimes certain utterances by leaders can lead to catastrophe. So I am glad the, we've not had the situation like the situation there was in obtaining in Rwanda. So let's all act in national interest. Sometimes I get angry. Katuntu insults me in Parliament, but I don't box him. I, I fight with him when we go to the canteen. <laughs> but uh, uh, in Parliament, I always try to win my arguments by just shouting him down and uh, I would try to him and persuasion. Persuasion. And behind the scenes, uh, I buy him uh, Coca Cola. Do you do that often behind the scene thing? Yes, of course. <laughs> he's my friend. He's my friend. He's my friend. Uh, and in the conduct of politics, we sometimes transcend the party lines. We transcend party lines because when a man like uh, the Honorable Katuntu here is eminent with your ideas, uh, he gives you professional advice behind the scenes and opposes you in parliament. Sometimes he tells you things, what's wrong with you? Okay. It's because uh, the honor of cartoon is a mirror reflection of me. And I always look at him in order to see what is. Do you get scared when you see yourself in the mirror? Uh, through him. <laughs> through him. Through him. <laughs> <laughs> like what, what has happened to me? Now, when <laughs> those in authority don't use their opposites as a mirror reflection. Mm -hmm. They commit blunders. And sometimes those blunders lead to disaster. Honorable, Honorable Abdul Katuntu, it, it appears um, the NRM really is here for, for a long haul. And, and, and you've been trying also to wrestle power from them. And they are also out competing in some ways, fairly or unfairly. What is your strategy in conclusion, by the way? Because our time is up. First of all, I don't have any problem with any institution being here. Mm -hmm. You know, our democracy should survive on this public institution. The reason why we question what goes on the NRM, because we think it's a public institution. All the political parties should be. And if you don't have democracy within these parties, you never know the people of Uganda will make a choice tomorrow and hand over power to a group that does not have democratic credentials and we'll be still in the same problem. So the, the future of this country lies in democratic institution across the board. FDC, NRM, UPC, DP, JEMA, 
and you, you for what? That one. So, do I recognize that they will try to, to hang on and dig in and we have to push them? Yes. But how do we push them? We need to push them through a democratic means. We need to push them by mobilizing against them. We need to push them by recruiting from them. And let me tell you, there is no recruiting way FDC, from them. Yes, there is no way FDC will get into power today if we don't recruit from NRM. It's not possible. Because l let us look at the history of this party. It was a big, you know, uh, before 1995, it was criminal for some of us who used to say we were opposition. Because the country was almost 80% <laughs> NRM. But for us who have been in this opposition struggle for long, right from 1986, because we have never believed in this NRM thing, we have... We have then <laughs> recruited people from the NRM and we've been continuing they have been to do losing that. People. Oh, yes. And, and, and they have been losing and losing. Once in a while, they pick one of us, but one, but on, we are on the rise as opposition. And them, they are on the fall. So we need to build our structures as a party. We need to go to the grassroots. Let me ask you one thing Where is the strength of the NRM? My own assessment is. It's amongst, for example, the women, is in the rural areas. What is your strategy to penetrate that constituency? That is the only way we can get these guys out You're of power. You're cutting short General Kahindo Tafiri. There is nothing wrong with the uh, FDC getting us out of power, provided they do it democratically. There is something wrong with FDC dictating to us that we should change our leadership. Nobody is telling you so. Yes, because you are always complaining. When is Museven going? When is Museven going? Why don't you tell your own leaders to go? For us, we want... Wait, wait a minute. For us, we want our leader to continue. When we think it's time to change, we shall change him. So you should not... We are talking about national policy. We are not talking about national leadership. Perennially, 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 perennially telling us, Museven must go. Museven must go. We, we are not talking about your party leadership. We, we are talking about national leadership. Ah. And those are two different things. No, no, no. Because you, know. you see, we change national leadership every five years. You do? Yes, we do. From a seven to a seven no, 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 seven yes. to a seven. Because <laughs> we, we, the, the Constitution asks us to conduct elections and mandates every party to choose its to bring a candidate. Our to bring General Museveni. Why do you want us to change? A captain who is winning. Nobody is telling you. Yeah, we're talking about I the national leadership. Okay. That's why. So the, day, that's the day, the day, that's the day, why, the day you that's defeat us. That's why. The day you even in the us. national constitution, the day, the day you in the us. CA, and General Tafir was there, wasn't there. The constitution provided, for example, term limits. Why did it provide for term limits? Uh, do you believe in a, Do you believe in religion? Which one? Oh, you that's the, that's one that's one of the points of uh, departure uh, uh, between uh, you and me. You uh, know, you believe in religion. I'm telling you, that's one of the points of departure. You believe in repentance in religion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gentlemen. Like, like there is time uh, for our, our time. Religion, but our time there is, is time out. For second thoughts. Our but time is out. And We're going to have time for second thoughts. To quote religion. <laughs> okay, this is it now. Uh, our time is out. Thank you very much, Honor Abdul Katuntu. Thank you very much, General Kahindo Tafide. Thank you very much for you for being a part of this. Good night and God bless Uganda.